I want to talk about object interfaces, and two in particular, a general object and a dictionary. One thing that I see a lot of developers do with TypeScript is use the keyword any to really mean an object. Sometimes I'll see something like this in the code base. And I'm guilty of this as well. And most of the time that any keyword, especially in this situation, doesn't really mean that I don't care what the type is coming in. I definitely won't have a switch that tells me what to do if it's a number or a string or if it's just one character or if it's a boolean. None of that really means anything to me. What I'm really looking for is an object. And unfortunately, uh, TypeScript doesn't have a general object like this. And if it, even if it does, it'll incorrectly match on a lot of different things. It tells me that it's in incorrect, but really, in this situation, yeah, does not exist in type object. But in this situation, it might actually exist there. It's just the object type doesn't really tell give us what we need. What we really need is the ability to say, hey, this can be any kind of an object. Maybe right now I don't have the specific interface, but I need to be able to tell uh, the user that they need to pass in an object. And in the same way, I might want to return an object of the type database connection or whatever. But until I have that interface ready, I just really want to tell the user that this is not a string, it's not a Boolean, it's an object, and you'll be able to access some certain keys there. And what I basically want is a replacement for any to be a general type like we have for string or number. A lot of times we do care what kind of a number it is or what kind of a string it is, but we really just want to get that basic type that it's a string, especially when we're rapidly prototyping. There are some cool ways of getting around using any. If we use any, we run into an issue like this. And this is actually fine, even if that value is a string. So this is one of the dangers of using any. What we can do instead in this situation with an object is to create an interface that satisfies a general object. And this is one of the tricks that I've seen on the, in the, I think I've seen this in the documentation, but I'm a huge fan of this. So what an interface allows you to do is specify the shape of an object. It allows you to do a bunch of different stuff, but for, the, for our purposes, we can specify the shape of an object. Like it has an ID of no, num, number, it has a name, it's a string, it has, I don't know, data and it's JSON, but not really, right? We would specify any. If we want to specify a general object, we can actually use this really cool syntax over here. Um, what this basically means is, well, what this basically means is that to satisfy the, this interface, the object has to have a key that's a string and a value that's any. And that actually satisfies the majority of objects. So if we do something like this, get dbcon, and you'll see that if I try to pass in something like test, it's going to give me an error. S is not a civil to parameter general object. But if I pass in an actual object through, it won't give me any errors and it satisfies that limitation. I also know that I'm going to get an object back. And I can do all kinds of things on that object. Con dot port. I can call things on it that might not be on that connection. However, because I specified this general object, again, a little bit better than any, and I might not remember or might not want to write out the entire interface, maybe I'm rapidly prototyping, maybe I'm just dealing with a new library and I just need to be able to get stuff done and I don't want to get bogged down. Well, this is a way to ensure some basic um, type safety without sacrificing the, the um, flexibility of having <clears throat> an object that has basically no um, requirements on you. So I think that's one of the more interesting interfaces and one of the more important interfaces. I kind of wish this was built in, 
I wish there was a way to just say, hey, get db con. You know, I'm looking for an object, but that doesn't seem to work because it it will check if uh, uh, TypeScript will check if uh, the object type has this method, and I don't want that. The other interface that I feel like is really really important, and it makes me so happy that um, I kind of found this or that I started using it in my workflow is the dictionary interface. So a dictionary, in my mind. Um, in TypeScript or JavaScript is a, um, a key lookup, right? Where the key is an ID or something unique, and then you have an object within. So instead of having to loop over a collection of, let's say, users, and try to do a users.find, and then a find function, right? What we can do is have an object where the ID or the name houses the actual user object and that makes more sense to me um, in a lot of situations um, it's a pretty familiar pattern in Redux um, it's a pretty familiar pattern all over JavaScript and TypeScript so using an interface like this it's kind of the same as the object and there's something special we can do when we know it's a dictionary and that's specify the type right over here and what is that type we don't have to specify any we can ensure that there's a specific structure of ID or name, whatever, and the value being a, a specific type using generics. So I did a video about generics before, and the syntax is pretty simple for it, in that when you have an interface or function or whatever else, you can cr use the angle brackets to pass in a type variable. And that type variable can be passed around and substituted for any of the type declarations um, just like you would with, let's say, like a regular function and regular function arguments. So I know that the key is always going to be a string, but the value is always going to be the u. Um, and so what I can do is, let's say we have those users, right? And let's say we have a user interface. The user has an ID, and they have a name. And they have some data. And for that data, we're actually going to use that object interface. Because we know there's some data there. We might not know the shape of it. And we might just not care right now. Great. We're going to say that user, user. There we go. It's an array of users. And we're just going to add one user. And that user is not going to have any data. If we wanted to convert this into a dictionary, you can see that we have a type declaration here for this array of users. If we wanted to do a dictionary, we could rewrite it as so. We're going to say that it's a dictionary, and we're going to say it's a dictionary of users. And now watch the magic. We're going to have the first name be the key. And we're going to have the object here. And TypeScript doesn't complain because it knows that and, and it enforces that structure. If I delete name, and you kind of saw the squiggles as I was writing it out, you'll see that the name is missing part, uh, is missing in type, ID number, data, all of this, the user type. So these two little interfaces over here can help you really um, nail down the types in these mu a little bit more complex situations, but really very real world situations. I think the general object is one of the more powerful interfaces. And I really wish that this existed in TypeScript by default, because I find myself more than ever returning in any or asking for an any argument, or just not filling out the argument, because I have no way to s very easily specify that I'm expecting an object of any kind. That it's not going to be a string, not an array, not a number, not a null or whatever, or maybe a null, but it's always going to be um, an interface. Or rather, it's always going to be an object. Um, the dictionary generic is something that I use very often as well. Uh, the, di the dictionary pattern, I'm not sure what it's really called or if, what if it has a formal name. 
um, is something that I use all the time. Um, I use it for lookups for users, for usernames, for contact names. I use it for um, easy lookups between other um, uh, easy lookups for other um, objects. Um, basically, anytime I have a collection and I want to make it easy to look up a member of that collection by some property. What's really cool here is that we can actually extend this a little bit and we can say that a user is actually going to always extend the general object. Oops, extend. And so what it actually means when you do this is that we'll definitely have these three keys, but there might be a lot of other keys as well. So it's kind of cool that you can pass this around and use it in these situations. I hope my video was helpful, and I hope that you're enjoying TypeScript as much as I am. I have a lot of other videos up. I implore you to check them out. They're in these bite-sized, I don't know, 10, 12 minute intervals, or they take about 10, 12 minutes to get through. Um, anyway, thank you for watching.